Well, I shouldn't show you what's in this safe. I don't even know if it's legal to put in a vault or not, but uh, what the hell? Let's open it up. Food. <laughs> you need a pantry, you need a pantry. I'll show you some pictures here. So my dad put this photo album together. My father was a, he was one of the top jockeys, he actually was the top jockey in North America after he got out of World War II. He went into the Pacific and uh, was on a destroyer. Well, here's a picture of part of the ranch I grew up on in Walden. It was a few thousand acres for sure. But, uh, you know, it was a really good place. These are the Medicine Bow Mountains. Just old black and white photos. You should have seen it in color. In the winter, you're feeding cows. Summer, you're haying. My dad put me, you know, on a tractor. I was scared to death at like five years old. About flipped it over on myself a couple times. But, uh, you know, it puts a work ethic in you. I was never given anything in life. The work never stops. Expert Freddy Dodge and master fabricator Juan Ibarra as they help struggling miners. Freddy, how's it going, Rick? Didn't make you talk. It didn't make this is the last chance for me to have a roof over my head. When they're not on the road, rescuing mines for golden riches continues at home. Beautiful gold bar. Gold is money and money is gold. Now, Freddy. Slate. That year probably took some time off of Freddy's life. Give exclusive access to their families. I can only handle them for a few weeks at a time, so it's always good that he's on the road. <laughs> and reveal the backstory to their gold mining legend. That shows his dedication that he'd take a part off his truck to get that gold. I was born in Colorado, and Colorado is gold country. Freddie Dodge is back home after six months on the road. It's an example. I think the Yukon's produced around 12 or 13 million ounces of gold. And I think Colorado is maybe 60 or 70 in this roughly the same time period. You know, I've been messing with gold since I was just a kid, just with a gold pan, not even knowing what some of it's, but uh, it was always just a passion. So I stuck with it. I always thought I was born in the wrong century. I'm glad now I wasn't born in the 1800s, but as a kid, you know, I always dreamed about the cowboys and the prospectors. The veins of Freddie's family. My dad, you know, he was he was kind of a prospector, right? He never he never made it big in gold, but he tried. Like a hard rock mine at the ranch there, he found a showing and pretty much by himself drifted in like a hundred feet into the mountain into solid rock and then went up like fifty feet or so. But there wasn't enough gold there to make it worthwhile. So we've got Derek, Rocky, myself, and little brother Joe. My older brother disappeared into the Yukon when I was just a little kid. He had gold mining in his head. Rocky got me started in fabrication and taught me more than... My first recollection of Freddie was when he was probably five or six with a pan and a crick. Probably didn't know what he was doing, but he was having fun trying. Our parents basically stated, if you take Freddie with you, you gotta keep him with you. So we go up to the shop and I'm gonna stay there for hours working, doing whatever. He's an excellent student, because he wanted to learn it. And he wanted to learn to be the best on it. Well, when I was a kid, I had gold fever and adventure fever, and I tied. A thousand miles west, outside of Reno, Juan Ibarra is also back home, working on a new... So we're here in Nevada, uh, northern Nevada. This is actually a shop that my family and I put together. Today's an exciting day. We actually got a new service bed getting delivered. A bed for his ton service truck. My current truck right now, you know, I've had it for eight years. We've ran it all over the place. Well, you can tell Juan's kind of a flashy guy, because the first time when he had a big orange Peterbilt. It definitely doesn't stand out at all. <laughs> when I'm on the highway or whatever, people recognize the truck. They pass you, they come back, they start taking pictures of the truck. You get stuck if you throw a banana peel under the tire. Today, she really wasn't designed for off-road. You know, there, there's my bumper that I have, it sits a little low. Um, oh, so yeah, she, I've, I put her in some horrible situations and, and sometimes it hasn't worked out too well. Hey, 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 Juan, stop. We put 
with you know a couple hundred thousand miles on it. But uh, it's time. It's time. It served its purpose. It's been a great truck, but uh, it's time to upgrade. With weeks to finish before he hits the road, Juan awaits delivery of all new parts. The truck will have a specially designed service and storage units. The three foot by eight foot front deck will house his 1800 pound welding unit with a to safely secure eight feet of hose. Once completed, the service bed will attach to a brand new 2022 Mack Granite 700 pound Palfinger crane. Well, here it is. The one has found his passion in gold mining. His route was more indirect than. I had my own plumbing business, and we still have our own plumbing business to this day. Just regular household repairs, some sewer repairs. But uh, my business was struggling you know, really, really bad. So uh, I was trying to find a way to make some extra money. I actually took a job working at a, at a gold mine. My first experience with gold mining was, uh, shoot, must have been 2012. It was actually a position that was, uh, they call it a drill doctor is what it is. So pair anything that's pneumatic underground. And uh, so I went to work there, worked there for about a year. And shortly after that, actually, there was a job, uh, job fair for a company. And they were looking for mechanics. So I applied for the job. I ended up getting the job. David and I are getting ready to do our walkthrough. This is my shop. That's kind of where I got my start. You know, honestly, it was that a necessity. Um, you know, financially, things were really tight for us. I was at, at the verge of, you know, loot house, everything. And so, uh, you know, just trying to make money. That's what it was. Hey, how we doing? Good, Mike. How you doing? Good. Awesome. You made it, huh? I did. Good. Good. What I want to do is I want to just unload it right here. OK. Um, yeah, we can do that. We just leave enough room to be able to work around it. Do we have any saw horses? Those big ones, huh? Yeah. Where are they at? We over there. I got those. We got those foldable ones right there. One is brought in and brother-in-law Travis to help get his all new truck ready for the road. Once it comes off, we'll have to cut some blocking for the front of it. So okay. that way it actually sits level. All right. Ready when you are, Mike. One coming up. OK. Great for me. You know, I've ran that truck for years. So it's, uh, it's time to upgrade it. And we're going to build something that's uh, purpose built for what I do. How are we looking, Juan? We look good. Go ahead. Down, booming down. When Todd called me and asked me to come up to the Yukon, I knew I had to put a truck together. You know, I had a smaller truck, but it wasn't really what I wanted. And it didn't have enough room for all my tools. I spent almost every dollar that I had putting the truck together and getting things ready to go. In 2015, Juan took his Peterbilt north to go and work. You got a new face in camp, Juan. Congratulations, Juan. Juan's a mechanic, had a great resume, he's worked at mines. The main thing, a guy like us. So basically, I quit my job, or quit the contract I had, put a ton of money into a truck, tooled it up, went on the road for 32, you know, the Yukon, to go work for someone that I never really met before. It was here that Freddie and Juan met for the first time. Freddie Dodge was the first guy to come out and befriend me. We're crooked this way, Juan. Really, what I need to do is get higher so I can get that box. Let's go down. Yeah, that's good now. You know, you could tell right away, right off the get-go. He's just a down-to-earth guy. What do you think? Hey, we did it, buddy. Hey. That's how we became friends. It's a, he tells a lie, then I tell a lie, and then we complement each other's lies. Dos siete cho. Freddie's Spanish is getting better this year, for sure. <laughs> One the Huffman crew kept him away from his wife Andrea for six months. Uphill, uphill, uphill. Crazy because we never met the Hoffmans and they always seemed like nice family and everything, but it was, you know, we didn't know when was the la next time we were. You okay? Andrea and Juan have four children. How old are you? Two. It's my little girl. You want to come say hello? Come here. How are you doing, sweetie? I'm finding crystals. You're finding crystals? <laughs> really? What kind of crystals? What, are you panning, Juanito? Yeah. Well, if I go find gold. Are you going to find gold in there? Yeah. Yeah? By myself. By yourself? Yeah. There's, there's a little bit of a special connection, for sure. She, uh about killed me, <laughs> about killed my wife, but really, no, no. You know, Aiden, it, 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 it's kind of hard to even talk about. 
Andrea unexpectedly went into labor at home, forcing her mechanic husband Juan skill to his repertoire. It happened two years ago, but still kind of fresh in my mind. You know, we ended up delivering her ourselves at home, and and uh, you know, to this day I think about it like my whole world could have changed there in a matter of seconds. I look at Aiden. I remember when she came out, and I actually had to pull her out. She was, uh, you know, non-responsive, and you know, to now I look at this little girl that runs around and. I'm definitely putty in that little girl's hands. And fortunately, it, all, it, it could have gone so wrong. I could have lost my wife, could have lost my daughter. You know, my entire world could have been wrecked. Well, even when Juan and myself aren't out on the road helping other miners, I've still got my own business that I... But when separation anxiety kicks in, Juan is never more than a phone call away. Hey, buddy. Hola. Come up south. How? Good, buddy. How you doing, bud? Oh, doing all right. Just uh, headed out to change a sluice box. Yeah, no, I'm here at the shop just uh, trying to get some things going. We got a got a bunch of work truck done before next season, so oh, okay. I got going on it. Okay. See you later, friend. Hey, you see soon. you later, my friend. Today, Freddie collects the gold concentrate from his local mines. Hopefully, there's a lot of gold in it. I'll grab another hammer, bud. All ready. Got to hurry, because it's cold this time of year. And the carpets will freeze solid on you. Then it's a real pain in the ass. You want me to pull them up, or you want to? Um, it doesn't matter. Without the flowing water, Freddie has just changed the mats on the 30-foot sluice runs before they freeze. We've got Cameron here. He's one hell of loose boxes. He's one hell of a fabricator, and he's one hell of a good guy. So Cameron started with us right out of high school, and uh, now he manages the company. When I'm gone, he takes care of pretty much everything. When I'm back, he still takes care of most of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> After nearly four decades, find the secrets of maximizing gold recovery in the sluices. Well, I'm not gonna get into it with you guys on pitch or water flows or any of that. There are a few things we wanna keep to ourselves, but I've tried to teach the Hoffmans, everybody, efficiency. You put your boards close so you can grab them. It's simple. Test your middle. See what size gold you've got. You know, are you screening to the right size for the material you have? Get your water flows where you think material. Test your bottom mat. See how much gold's carrying to the end. You want to pass your mat spread? Sure. Keep it simple. Complication usually costs money. We just changed a 30-foot sluice box in, what, 15 minutes, Cam? Yeah, it's... You know, you see a lot of guys, you know, that we've helped will go out in a little bitty sluice box that's, you know, half this wide and half this length, two hours to change, right? You see how efficient this stuff came out of there? The first time we saw Todd Hoffman's sluice box, it was not a joke, but he had 20-foot sluice box with eight foot of riffles in it. Rest of it just plates, you know, slick iron. What a slick iron do? Any gold? No, no, slick plates don't catch gold. Exactly. Up. <laughs> in 2010, Tom and Freddie to help salvage his mining operation in Alaska. Hope this is Fred. Hey man, Todd. Did I make you talk? The rookie miners had a complicated setup that was failing to catch any gold. Well, we'll have a look at the plant and see how much gold you're losing. Uh, my dad's nugget trap look to you. Not good, but definitely use this area to catch gold, Todd. Right now, it's just a straight shoot that material yeah. slides down. They just didn't know what they were doing. So what we want to do here, Todd, is we want to make a true nugget trap with riffles in it. Remember one thing, Todd, it's can't catch gold. If your riffles are packing up, you're losing all of your gold recovery that's possible in this loose box. My suggestion, this box and complete riffles all the way down. Todd's not the guy out there digging ditches, right? But he's the guy that will listen to people to a point. Back in Nevada, one takes shape. We're going to get this welder unboxed. We're going to get it in place. This is going to sit on top of that new welding deck, but we want to kind of get it figured out uh, where it's going to go and how we're going to run all the hoses. Traded his 1992 Peterbilt for a 2022 Mack truck. 
Side shift it this way, and then you want to go over about a foot. The welder unit will sit on Juan's custom-made deck. That looks good. I like that it's a little wider than my old deck. The build team is missing today's action. Able to be here with us, but uh, yeah, once he feels better, he's going to be here at the shop. Uh, he'll start helping us put this new truck together. Juan Sr. played a key role in putting together the old Peter built. When we put this truck together years ago, I think it's fair to say that my dad and I bonded. We they put it together and picking out what we were going to do, how we were going to do things, and it was long nights, late nights. It's kind of a bittersweet, you know, basically see it go is because it was a family affair putting the truck together. Hey, Dad. Hey, we're here at the shop. Uh, let me show you what we got. Made a little bit of progress with the truck. Bed got delivered today. Sounds good. So we got the bed here. We got the, wel we got the welding deck in place, kind of where we want it. In my family line, we're actually, we come from a long line of miners. My dad was actually the first generation that, but my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, they were all miners, and they were all gold miners. We're just trying to mock everything up, see what, what, what's gonna go where and how. Growing up, my dad was a plumber, so my, I worked alongside my dad ever since I was a little kid, since about eight years old, nine years old. Growing up with four sisters, I used to go to my sisters would go to, so early on they started doing ballet and you know piano lessons, violin lessons and everything else. Eventually I started doing ballet too. So then the point where he's like, well, that's enough of that. My son's gonna start going to work with me, so. Working alongside my dad as a kid, I really didn't like it, you know, cause I used to see all my buddies, you know, after school go and play around and do whatever, you know, get involved in sports. And I never had that option. I didn't, I didn't get to do that, you know. After school, my dad would be there every day to pick me up, nine, 10 o'clock at night every day. But now, you know, years later, I look back, I'm like, that, that was amazing. That, that's the best upbringing I could have had. I kind of like having, like having it next to the cab when I get in and out of the cab so I can start it up and shut it down. In fact, you're going to change the oil. Just remember details. Yeah. Maybe I'll think about changing it, flipping it around. I, I think my dad, being that I'm his son, I think he expected more out of me. I think of my son as well. You know, I don't want him just to be mediocre or average. I want him to, to really excel in what he does and, and really try hard. So I think my dad's always kind of put that in me. It's just, you know, you just don't want to be average. You want to do better than that. So my dad hasn't seen the truck build. I just showed him a little bit all, and uh, he's excited about it. He, uh, he came up with a good, uh, good question, though. Right now, the way I got the welder set up, it's not really very efficient to be able to oil. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn it around. We're gonna flip it around. It's gonna change the layout a little bit, but I think it's gonna be a better layout. Well, that looks good, guys. I think that'll actually work better. The controls, the crane controls, the welder, everything on the one side. Ensuring everything is in working order is critical. Found out on a journey to the Yukon in his old rig. You know, it, it, it's kind of embarrassing. Here I am, a mechanic, and I'm showing up to, to work with a broken truck. So you made it. I'm broke, but I made it. Does it mean we have to tow you around all summer? <laughs> That's what I was hoping, you know. So what happens? Lost the transmission. Ooh. Yeah. The second I hit the jig brake, I'll That's it. Yeah, they're they're strip so it cool. out, yeah. <laughs> I went to work for Tony, and it, it actually was, it was actually a really good fit. Working for Tony and his family was, Tony, even though he's he's really kind of a hard ass, but he's a great guy to work for. One helped Tony rebuild an ancient gold dredge that has the 1940s. Hold it. Now the tricky part's gonna be getting it on top of these posts. What do you mean it's gonna be the hard part? It's like a ballet, man. It's like a dance. You gotta oh, get it just oh, right, you know? Oh, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. <laughs> you know, he tells you what he wants. Plain and simple, just get it done. And it worked out well. We had a great relationship. That first year, we got the second dredge. I, I would say 75% accomplished. He couldn't find the parts he needed, so the end of the season came earlier than planned. Okay, yeah, guys. Call it off. It was done for the season. That's it. Time to go home. Fortunately, we didn't get to finish it. But who knows? You know, we, we talked about that. And, you know, if it ever comes up that there's an opportunity to finish that dredge, I'd love to do that. It was so involved in the assembly of it, I want to be there to finish it. 
That works out better. I wasn't sure, but that, that, that's going to work good. What do you think? That works for me. Yep. All right. Do it. Well, let's fire up a table. Mug a few minutes here, then we'll run some gold. Back at his workshop, Freddy's ready to clean the concentrate from the mats he pulled. We've got blacks, those little specks in there. That's gold. We're going to take it from pounds and pounds of black sands and heavies down to hopefully many ounces of gold. We're looking at it, so let's make some gold. So as you can see here, we're separating stuffy on the table. Uh, our gold is the heaviest element we've got on here. So pure gold has a specific gravity of 19 points. You know, the other things we have here are irons, right? We got a lot of iron on the table, which is magnetite. This probably has a specific gravity of around six. So volume three times what that black sand weighs. So we're using gold's own weight against it to catch it. We use it against it in the slit, in the jigs. We use it on the table. And that's how we're able to separate the gold from those other lighter sands that are out there, that, which I'm glad it's heavy. I don't know how we catch it. I'd say it's like watching paint dry, but it never gets old watching yellow lines of gold run down a table. Going, Rocky? Pretty good. Running some gold. You know, some nice lines of gold, though. Yeah. Some beautiful gold. Pretty clean. Freddie and Rocky heard the same fascination with gold. Remember that uh, gold wheel we made? <laughs> we were kids out of a 55 gallon field wipe for motor. Washer motor. Yeah. <laughs> It worked, though, that little gold wheel. Now we get one out of 10 flakes. <laughs> We're both kind of the same. He left home when he was 16 years old with just his clothes in his car. And then when I was 16 years old, I left home and I just had my... I can build the plants, but he knows the recovery, the architecture of the ground and everything else. Of course, that's what he does. Rocky's a master, and uh, I'm pretty dang good at catching gold. So by putting those together, we've, you know, we've done great things for a lot of people around the world. Freddie's talent was on full display on a prospect in South America with the Hoffmans. Where do you want to start? Down by the water. Let's go. It's my first time ever panning in the ocean. Well, first time for everything, buddy. I don't know if there's a panning in seawater or not, except Jump catching the, the water. Man of war. What the hell is that? Jellyfish. <laughs> See it right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here? Yeah. If there's profitable gold here, this is the easiest spot we'd ever mine. We need okay. to build a plant that we can actually get material through. I don't know, but we'll find something. You're going to build a wash plant on the beach? That's crazy. It's pretty simple. You just build something, and there's nothing available like we did on the beach. You use what's available in the area. You know, we used wood because, uh, that's what was available. We didn't have welders. We didn't have grinders. We didn't have things to cut metal with. We we're trying to build a wash plant to last years. We we're building a wash plant to do a good test. We got water. You know, it took a day to build. Good job, Freddie. Thanks. But it proved that that wasn't a good place to mine. A buck a yard, Freddie? That's my guess. That's terrible. Takes with the Hoffmans was Todd talking me into going to Diana. It was just a mess. One thing so hot that I didn't care. I'd prospect and I'd pan in those creeks. I'd stand right chest deep in water in the creek. And in there, there's electric eels, there's snakes. And I'm like, I don't care because it feels good. It's better than standing out in 110 degree sun in 100 percent. I'll, I'll take my chances with the Cayman. They should have never been in that spot in the first place. But uh, to your advice up to a point, and then he's going to do what Todd wants to do. Todd did listen to Freddie Lance, and together with brother Rocky, he designed and built the Hoffman's four brand new plants. Well, we'd made numerous plants. If you know the ground, you can twist things a little bit to make it better. I would spoke to Fred about what the material's like. Does a plant need a nugget trap? Can they a nugget trap? Do they have the water to run a big sluice system like that? After talking with Fred, this and that, the design just fell together. I love that plant 
but I'm tired of moving that plant. I've moved it into the Yukon, put it together, moved it around the Utes, tore it down, moved it to Oregon, tore it down, moved it to Colorado, tore it back down to Colorado, moved it back to the Yukon. It's lucky that the bolts aren't wore out. It doesn't have an odometer on it, too it, many miles. It's a flipping nice plant, but I'm flipping tired of moving. I could probably put it back together in my sleep. Back in Nevada, welder now in place, Juan is making progress fabricating for his new service truck bed. On this unit, it, it runs a hydraulic, also air, and obviously it's a welder and a generator. But to keep it clean, I don't like having a bunch of hoses just kind of ran on the side of its wing. So this sits up a little higher so we can get all the hoses underneath it, and that way it stays clean and tidy. If you look on this other truck, we actually, that's how I did it years ago. I wore it so that way all my hoses my welding, my welding leads, my power leads, and then also hydraulic and airlines go underneath the deck so that way it stays clean and organized. He's younger than I am by 20 years. So he's got skills that I don't have as far as, you know, new electronics. We both meant one another, right? So we work really good together. No amount of expertise for their season in 2017. When Freddie bought a claim in Colorado, and set up as a mine owner. Everything was ready, everything ready. The water was hooked up, the pumps were hooked up, the electrical was hooked up. You know, I'd rebuild, I'd put a new screen on the plant. I'd armored the conveyors up. It was ready to pull hard. <clears throat> Hello. You don't have my... You are in violation of Park County land use regulations. Your property with mining and commercial uses are not permitted in a residential zone district. Order. Based on the foregoing, you are hereby ordered to cease and desist all activities immediately. <clears throat> That's it. I've got most of my life savings tied up in that plant. <clears throat> And I got friends that need a job. <laughs> Honestly, that year probably took some time off of Freddie's life. And I hate to say that because Freddie, Freddie aged a lot that year. He had the burden of, you know, he has her that are working, you know, they're all expecting gold at the end of the season. You know, he had a ton of his own money tied up in it. Everybody listen up. I want all mission to fight for our rights on this, okay? All right, Todd, we're shutting down. Millions of dollars on the line uses to go down without a fight. I'm here today to try to get you to lift this cease and desist order. That property was first mined almost 160 years ago. It can't be zoned resident statute 34-1-305. That plant sitting out at that mine, every piece of that is out of my pocket, right? It's my life safe. I've, I've tried to do a good job. All I want to do is mine this property. And I believe we have the legal right to do that. Well, it's all up to the county commissioners now. After two weeks of deliberation, Freddie, get. They've lifted the cease and desist until the zone. You are kidding. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> worry. <laughs> once we got the plant running in Colorado, once we got all our eyes dotted, then we did good. Hey, that's good, man. <laughs> well, let's melt some gold. After cleaning the concentrate on his table, Freddie prepares for the final stage. There's what it weighed before E5. The fine gold, worth almost $53,000, is now ready for smelting. I know the purity of the gold within a half a percent, but sometimes you don't know what your melt loss is because you always have a little bit of sand, a little bit of impurities with it. By me melting it myself, I know what those impurities are. Melt loss in this should be around 2%, but I don't want to try to get it with gravity. If you do, you'll start losing gold. 
So, and 2% is really clean. Most gold miners are 5, 6, 7, 8%. Well, this is an induction furnace. It's using electricity to, uh, to melt the gold. So there's electric coils around the crucible in there. That super, so they're heating that crucible up to, you know, we're gonna heat it up to around 2,000 degrees. Gold melts at 1,930 degrees, pure gold does. Let it sit there and cook and then start pouring some bars. Up, get it up to temperature. We don't want to pour into it cold. You get a reaction between that hot gold and that cold steel. So we're gonna get this mold up all oh, degrees or so before we pour our gold into it. So what we're doing is just acetylene smoke. And we're gonna put a thin layer of smoke in our mold. It just puts a, a thin membrane of smoke between the gold and our mold. It's getting close now. In Nevada, one's almost ready to attach the subframe. Oh, that's it, Trav. That looks good. Not bad, huh? Uh -uh. Let's let it cool off for a second, but then we'll put it underneath the welder and get it set in place and uh, see where we're going to drill the holes. We'll hold it in place and uh, get the first couple bolts started here. Travis and I actually went to school together, and, and that's friends, and started hanging out. That's how I met Andrea, his sister, and uh, we eventually got married. But yeah, traveling since, since we were kids. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna center it on the deck. That way it looks a little more, you know, you know we're gonna move it over a little bit, then drill it and then uh, bolt it in and then it's done. Well, Trav, we got it all bolted in. Really what we need. Yep. We don't wanna leave this like uh, dredge number two, <laughs> not done. Got the battery in, let's give it a shot. Let's start it up. Alive. Now that one's done all his truck arrives in a few weeks, he can get down to some more serious business. So here's the prepared meat. Oh, way to nothing. <laughs> Haven't eaten for at least six hours. I should only do probably four. <laughs> you know, it's kind of nice. Uh, we'll know her, but my wife, she'll bring the kids up and everything. And halfway through the workday, it'll be nice to be able to just stop and make some food for my wife and the kids and just hang out in life, you know? It's not about, you know, crazy fancy meals, it's just enjoying each other's company and, you know, something simple like this, it's just, it's really enjoyable. I can only handle all time, so it's always good that he's on the road all the time. <laughs> yeah, our, don't you have to go to work soon? <laughs> so I grew up only away from here. Um, so just same views, just a little further back. <laughs> and the kids seem to like a lot of dirt, the perfect place. They're fun, and they're that right age where everything's always muddy. <laughs> we got to get enough flux on there so when we pour ox covers the top of the bar to keep the air from hitting it, because if the oxygen hits it, it can it can make a mess and make an ugly bar. Well, let's pour a gold bar and see. The induction furnace has turned Freddy's finds into liquid gold. Just let her cool now. Hopefully it come out good. We've had all these civilizations over the years that have uh, used gold. And they've made coins out of them. Without gold, your cell phone wouldn't be as small as it is. It'd probably be that big, because gold is also the most conductive of all of us. So it's also the most malleable. So gold can be smashed practically to transparency before it comes apart, pure gold. Let's see what this bar looks like. One gold bar. You can see our slag underneath here, up in there. And here's our gold, so let's cool it off and see what it looks like. After smelting the original 29 ounces of gold, sounds like gold. The less than 27 ounces. One gold bar, one beautiful gold bar. 8.80. So in my head, a little under 2% melt loss on it, which is damn clean. Oh, 
This is big, huh? Yeah. It's the new welder. No. No? Is it is it your, It's yours. No. no? Whose is it? This one yeah. This Juanito's new yeah. truck? Yeah. You excited about your new yeah. truck, Juanito? Is it going to be big one? It's going to be about the same size, but it's going to be a little taller and just a little bit longer. Okay. And far. Yeah? And Daddy, is it going? It will be stronger. After six years working together, Juan paid his buddy the ultimate. Did he kiss you? No, he licked me. Oh, he licked you? What's his name? Baby Freddy. Freddy. He named him Freddy. Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's sure an honor, Wano. Bigger than you already, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody I'd rather be out on the road with than, than Mr. Juan Ibarra. I met Juan in the Yukon. We became friends right off the bat. I knew right then that he's the type of guy that I enjoy working with. <laughs> good person, he's truly good at what he does, and he's very intelligent. Well, Freddie's been a great friend, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it means the world to me that he could have asked anybody to be on the road with him. And, and he, he asked me to be on the road with him. Fred's a great guy, he really is. Uh, a heart of gold, and we both enjoy helping the people that we're helping. And it's really real what we're doing. And TV baloney. <laughs> Juan and myself are helping them get more gold and more money in their pocket. These struggling miners, guys, the mom and pops. So if Juan and myself can go in there and help them get a little more gold help them get another 10% or 15% or whatever. You know, that's more money in their pocket, right? Freddie and Juan will soon be hitting the road again to help more struggling gold profit. There's still a lot of gold out there. The old timers didn't get it all. There's gold to be found. There's gold to be mined. There's gold to be sold. And as long as the gold's in the ground, we're going to catch it. March 2017, the Con Expo Equipment Show. Congratulations last year, man. You Thanks. Won a hell of a lot of gold. I heard you're just going right back into it, huh? I'm going to make another run of 5,000. In accordance, I think you can do it. <laughs> According to the math that you guys have told me over the last seven years, you should have a billion dollars, Todd. It's the best ground we've That's ever done. That's what you said last year. Hmm? Let's make it official then. What do you mean? You challenged me for five. You told me last year you were going to beat. Tony and I combined. So, how'd that work out? What are we wagering? 100 ounces? That's like $100,000. You do that? Yeah, sure. Happy to take your money? Every time that I've crashed in my life is because I was arrogant. You know what? That kid is arrogant. Putting his money where his mouth is, so I'm pretty surprised to see that. But it doesn't make you a good miner. This season right here, this is ours that we've ever seen right here in Colorado. And I think we can pull it off. So do my guys. I got the big guns, company red. I've got three wash plants. Two claims, and you know what? Come hell or high water, I'm gonna beat that. You know, it'd be easy. But he is in my only battle. This year, I'm going to war on two fronts. Sir so Tony Beats. He's taken two and a half million dollars in royalties from me. I've got a plan to buy my freedom. A deal on new virgin ground. This year, we're gonna do 3,000 ounces, and I'm gonna take the dreads out of Thistle Creek, and I'm gonna have that thing running this fall in Eureka. The last thing sending him away is his eyes in the river. The minute that breaks up, off the Thistle Creek we go. There's no ifs or buts or buts. 
nothing is going to stop me now. assembles his crew for the first time this season at his Indian River claim. How are you guys doing? Good, Good man. So I'd like to just thank you guys for coming out. And I'm really looking forward to the summer. Magic. And so I'd like to welcome Mike back. Thanks for coming back. Yeah. Back where you long, buddy. Well, it's good to be back working with you guys, you know. That's good. Todd Hoffman in Vegas. And, of course, he was running his mouth about this season, as he always does every spring, handed us the gold that he beat us. <laughs> and you took that bet. Of course. <laughs> All we gotta do is hope he gets at least 100 ounces so he can pay us. You don't estimate him too much because you never know where the gold is, right? If you sluice enough dirt in random spots across the world, which it seems like he does, eventually you will find a pile. <laughs> Todd thinks he's gonna get 5,000 ounces. I don't think he'll get anywhere close to that, honestly. But we're sure as hell getting 5,000 ounces this summer. 500 ounces out of Big Red. That's a twice what we did last yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, I don't want Todd sluicing before us, really. And Big Red's just got to turn on and never shut off. Otherwise, our... then we should just set up shop down here until we're sluicing. I agree. Todd may have started a war here, but we're going to finish it. It's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go to battle with any other group of people. It's a good crew. Yeah, not a good looking crew. But we know how to work. Right. Let's go to war, boys. Work. Yeah. yeah. We are going for our biggest season ever, and it's off with that bet with Todd, you know. I'm kind of nervous about that, just because you never know. You never know. I'm not giving Todd Hoffman 100 ounces of my gold. So, we're going to war, and we're going to kick his ass. Sacramento mine in Colorado, Todd Huffman and crew are racing to put Monster Red together and start sluicing. I think we got to jump on Parker. We got the big guns. We got here early. We're going to get set up. We're going to kick some ass. Hey, Freddy. Hey, guys. Come on in, Kev. Okay. It's going to be fun like this when we leave. We got five to six months. Okay. I believe we could get 5,000. You know what it's like to come home and tell your family and friends you didn't make it? We're set. Last season, Todd's 5,000 ounce dream was shattered in Oregon. Three. That's it. That's it. And his crew went into meltdown. I need you guys to go the next two weeks without pay. You tell me the hey, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> A lot of things happened last year, but we actually have a real chance here of getting 5,000 ounces. This is on out with Parker. How much? 100 ounces. That's like $100,000. That is. He shook on it. Here's why we're going to get 5,000. We're going to be running three plants. Double trouble. We've got Rusty Red. Then we got Monster Plant three plants before. No one has. Guys, we got a real shot at this, but everybody's got to believe it, you know? But I do believe that the ground is good. I got a hundred grand on the line to Parker. And I don't want to hand that kid any. Let's go beat him. Yeah! All right, man, let's get to work. 5,000, not just Todd's journey, it's all of our journey. And uh, Todd does good, we do good. Todd doesn't do good. Todd and his crew can get any gold in the box. They must finish assembling the 50 ton. Monster Red. Let's go. Hey, Dad. What? <clears throat> Last year you let me feed. Double trouble. Yeah. I didn't mess anything up. I put a lot of yards through it. What are you getting at? Good. Run Monster Red this year. Just no, I want to run the whole plant. You want to run the whole Everything. Deal. Since I've been 10 years old, 
I went mining. Hunter has been by his father's side since Todd's first gold mining season eight years ago. So we just kind of sit here and do that. That's a piece of gold. There's not many guys I've seen that has that Hunter has. He's just a natural. I know I have a lot to learn, but I want to run this wash plant, and I know you underestimate me, but I think I can do it. If you don't get to 5,000, it could be your fault. Are you willing to take I, that on your shoulders? Yeah. Because the bulk of our goal is going to come off that plant. You know that. And I want you to give me a shot. What? How about two weeks? Well, if you do good, you can have it for the rest of the season. If you don't, i got to pull you off. Okay. I cannot play favorites with you, okay? Fine, okay. But I get to run it my way. Okay. Hunter's first job in fit the 12,000 pound conveyor to the wash plant. Dad, up, up. Wait, let's put the tailings conveyor on. Do however you want, but okay, let's take that one. Hook me up. But Todd's already decided how he wants it to go down. Try to bet. That's the heavy end. That's the heavy end. We got the loader right here. Boom out. Really? Fuck, thing he does. Everything he fits. Hunter is on the ground trying to tell his dad you know, what we need to do, and you know, Todd has no idea, so it's really difficult. Whoa! Hey, guys, guys, get out. It's going to be hippie. You're going to have to bring your stick in and curl out, otherwise you're going to hit the screen. Okay. I'm trying to tell you, you're not going to fit. You mean I'm not going to fit? I got plenty of room here, don't I? Dad! Oh. Dad! you got to be kidding me! It's game on! Dude, he's yeah, got this, a... This is the feet conveyor. It doesn't even have the impact bed on it. Is that not even the right conveyor? This is the wrong conveyor for this. What? first to finish building it, but Todd is finding it hard to hand over power. Why are you laughing? You act like you're a genius, like this is a great plan. 18 years old. You know how many times I put this conveyor together? A lot. These conveyors are identical. The other one has way more. Well, we can unbolt them and take them off. Are you me? Rather than move it, Todd wants to rebuild the conveyor. So we're going to go ahead and do it. He's the boss, so that's what he wants. That's what we're going to do. If this is any kind of glimpse of what it's going to be like, it's going to be real difficult. Hey, listen, you might be good at eating burgers, okay? You're going to put me in charge of this plant. We made a deal, and I think it should be set up with that conveyor here, and you weren't listening to a single thing I said you know today. What? Me? Yeah. You're putting us a day behind running, because do you want to change the rollers? It's not super fast. It's hard it's to easy. It's hard to change them. Shut up. I did put you in charge. And I will switch out the conveyor if that's what you want to do. Okay? That's what I want. If I'm in charge, then I want to put Andy in there. Because I know we have trouble working together because I just want to get this thing running. You want me off? Fine. If we don't get the gold, you're off this plant. <clears throat> For just a quick minute, and I don't know if that's good or bad, it's always hard to hand over power from a father to a son, and you know what? I'm getting fat and old, and he's 18 years old. He's ready to kick ass, I guess. But I just need to get this plant going, so that's all it is. We do it right because we do it twice around here. Let's go. Your Andy Spinks to lift in the right conveyor for the tailings. We're just going to get some tension on it so we can get these legs out. Control, Mr. Red. Are you okay over there, Thurber? Yep. 
Pretty scary. I thought it was uh, coming down, but the chain is okay. So we got the right conveyor in the right place. Now we just have to get it up on the stand. Once the crew sets the conveyor loose, Hunter has completed his first challenge without Todd. Sometimes you just need a break from your dad. Yeah, he wants to get this done, and he doesn't want to, I don't know, take any direction from anybody on the ground, but I don't know. He doesn't get old, and he mm -hmm. still does the same thing to me, too. So just deal with it. It's your dad. you got to love him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need to, you know, some time apart and do your own. Let's get some bolts. North, in the Klondike. Parker's crew is running neck and neck with Todd, 24 hours away, Big Red. We're running low yardage, 130 yards an hour. If we fall behind, we just ain't gonna be able to play catch up, so um, run. Unlike Todd, Parker's game plan to deliver 5,000 ounces relies on just... In the creek cut, Slucifer will run 280 yards of dirt an hour. Two miles downstream, runs less than half the dirt, so the crew needs to get it running as soon as possible. All they have to cut. We're gonna move Big Rat 400 feet that way, closer to the cut. They're reminding the season. Bingo, bango. We'll be sluicing tomorrow. Nobody walks on Gold Rush. Just rigging up. Should we carefully yank this thing? That's ready to go. Awesome. It's a good day. Well, I'm not on the Hoffman claim. I don't know if they're sluicing or not, but, uh, I'd bet money we're going to beat him. You're set, Rick. Let's let her rip. Try to lift her up a bit. Yeah, give it some height. A little more. Big Red. Froze up. So they can start sluicing. 
before Todd Hoffman. I think this is a, potentially another hour head start that Todd Hoffman gets, right? Do you have any like, bars? Nothing that'll do any damage. That's like concrete in there. It's like going too well, is it? Man, I can barely scratch this stuff. Is there anything else we can do? Do you let it thaw? No, we don't have time for that, right? Just grab a tiger torch and just lay them both right there. The last resort, two propane flame tiger torches. Water power, fire in Colorado. We're probably just worried about what's for dinner. Try to get that heat under there. Yeah, it's frozen in pretty good. Well, 
Interest without a question. The thing to figure out is, hey, what can we take apart and what don't we have to take apart? We? I mean you. I mean, I think you're the right man for it. Because there's not too many other people in the Yukon that are capable of doing a project like that. I know of other responsibilities and my own thing going on. I mean, I've been mining just as long as you. I got That's a big correct. crew just like you. That's quite a girl, huh? The dredge's colossal nine-ton engine was built to power army tug... This wouldn't run. Let me have a look at this. Jesus, not even rusty in there. No. They don't make engines like this at all anymore. To find one in this good of shape, it's pretty rare. I'd love to see this one, and I think it'd be pretty darn cool. You being a mechanic by trade, doesn't, mean, doesn't surprise me that interest, right? Seeing dredge number one, your dredge number yeah. one, running back in the 80s. Really? It was yeah. a long time ago. That's a couple days back. I didn't think I'd ever see technologies I mean, change. A lot of people didn't believe in the dredges. No, but I mean, number one has proven itself so well that I'm not a bit scared of the project. All I can say is you're in or you're out. I mean, let's, let's make this work, right? I've known Tony a long time. He's always been a crazy guy. Most miners, it's the only way you survive. In some sick way, I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's just the, the point of picking the right people. Up ahead. They just can't keep mining under Tony. How would we include about 175 claims? Yeah, just maybe picking a big old battle with Tony Beats. Should probably keep it quiet for a while. What the f*** are you doing? I think we might be neighbors pretty soon. No f*** what. Sacramento. Todd will take charge of double trouble. Ace in the hole, Monster Red. 
You know, most goals that my dad sets are really crazy, but this year, Ben, we know what kind of goals here. We're bringing in three wash plants, and uh, I think we're going to kick Parker's ass. All they need to fire up Monster Red is 24 hours. The crew has been filling Monster Red's holding pond. Jeez. Oh, yeah. f***ing up. I think we're losing out the whole bottom. How is it going? I guess it doesn't matter where it's going. We just need to... We need a drop. Okay. The porous base of the pond has allowed thousands of gallons of water to drain into the dirt. Problem, they're losing valuable sluicing time. It's costing us money. Every day we're not running. I'm not in a good mood. But you know, it's another 20, 30,000 bucks a line now. I think we're already behind schedule, and putting a liner in, that's going to take another week. Come on, we just got to make a choice what we're going to do. We already have double trouble settling pond. It's full of water. It's full of silt. Why don't we dig in ours? Below the dam, wash some of the silt down into our pond. I think it'll seal it just as good as a liner will. Hunter's solution? Dig in pond to double Trouble's full pond. The silt-rich water will then flow down the channel. It should create a natural watertight liner sealing the pond. I'm not so sure. Because you put a liner in it, it's a surefire bet. The silt in there and we don't fix the leak. We've got a pool full of silt and no water. I mean, we just don't know until we do it. You're two weeks started, and you got a serious decision to make. What is it? Is it going to affect? I think we should try it, because right now we're not going anywhere. Like a plan. Andy, grab 700. All right, let's go. Until Hunter's tested his silk scheme, both Double Trouble and Monster losing the Hoffmans up to $60,000 in gold every day. This is my first big decision of running this operation. I don't know. A lot of pressure on me right now. Copy. What do you think, buddy? It's getting pretty close. Say a little prayer, man. Say a little prayer. In Colorado, Hoffman has made his first major call seal the bottom of Monster Red's leaking holding pond with a layer of spring pond. And he's going to dig a trench and we'll blow this out. Hopefully uh, we get all that mud and it seals our pond too. So that's the... The Huffmans will have to delay sluicing while they line the pond with plastic, putting them a week behind Parker and losing them gold. Well, we're getting close. I got about another 10 feet. The water will start coming through. I hope this works. These decisions are low with right or wrong. You're either a hero or a goat. And I've been there. I don't know how this one's gonna go. Some water coming trickling through. Yeah, you can see it at the bottom. Yeah, 10-4. I mean, this dam's really holding on for dear life. What are we seeing? I think it's gonna break through. Get a big one, Andy. Get another one. Quick. Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Here we go. Oh, yeah. There. <laughs> when 
they do it. It's just gold fever. That's all it is. Since then, slowly creeped into Todd's world. And now, four years running, this will be number five. I'm not bragging or anything, I'm just saying. What the? Loads on fire. It's on fire? Are you kidding me? That really is on fire. We're gonna need another one. Oh, me. Is that full? Here. It's burning. Watch yourself. Here. Yeah. I think it's out. That's not good. No. No, that's not good. I don't think anything in there is salvageable. If I just let it cool down, because dumping a lot, we might crack something. <laughs> I think we always joke about running them until they burn to the ground, but we're, we're always just joking. Looks like it uh, probably blew an oil line. It's right behind the turbo and got in flames. Did somebody hit the bypass? Yeah. Cut the power. Every hour, the wash plant is shut down and $600 worth of gold. Let's just grab another loader. Okay. This doesn't help our sluicing time. Is two miles north on the other side of the claim. That's the first time that's happened. Yeah, I was thinking that. It's a real pain in the ass that that's what it takes. It's going to hold us up quite a bit. What the f happened here? What the hell? What is that? It's supposed to be. Heavy overnight rain has washed out the road. What the f way to reach the loader is to rebuild it. And our excavator's on the other side. That works. Wow. Well, Rock, paper, scissors. Sir? if you need it. Perfect. My rock, paper, scissors skills are good. Ah, I'm just going to pretend it's not water. <laughs> good job, Richard. That sucked. Is that... I'm just going to have to throw a bunch of rock back in here and try to put this road back in as quick as I can and get the damn loader and get back to getting gold. That's more like it. Parker must get the loader over to Big Red before he loses any more. Yeah, I just still got quite a bit of seepage coming through this rock. But once I compact it, I think it'll be all right. Bingo. Awesome. Pants are falling down because they're so wet and heavy. You okay? Yeah. All right. Is there anything else I need to do? No. The road's crossable. I mean, it's a small hiccup, right? In the big scheme of things, everything's all right. Keep big red food stick. Life is good. probably a shift, but we got another, and that's all that counts. coming at them and we can't get 5,000 ounces. Freddie, you ready? Hunter, you got most red? It's ready to go. I'll be down at the C team at Dump Trouble. Parker might have won the battle. He's got, but we're going to win the war. 
Let's get fired up. Want each one of these guys to take some freaking gold home to their family. Uh, last year I, I failed, and this year uh, I want to do better. I'm going to try to do better. Once all three washed running an unprecedented 800 yards of pay dirt an hour, six times what Parker can run on Big Red. First to find double trouble. There it is, dude. Double trouble. Two round guys running two round trolls. <laughs> Heading towards five thousand. I'll tell you what, Juan, she ain't the prettiest girl at the dance, but she's got comfortable shoes and lots of moves. You know, this is an exciting moment. We've never had three plants before. This year, we're going to have three plants up and running. It's going to be a good year. We're going to get some gold. Go ahead and fire up double trouble. Okay. Sounds good. All right, number one trouble. We're coming online with the conveyor for the beat. Okay, speed belt on. All right, Todd, ready to go. First bucket, double trouble. to Freddy's wash plant illegal. He must shut down and drain his two ponds immediately. No, no, I'm shut down. I have no water. So what do we do? I don't know. Operate Rusty Red. The Hoffmans won't be able to run the dirt they need to hit their season goal of 5,000 ounces. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, we're served in a junction. I can't use my water. We may have to go to court and fight it. I don't know. Dawson City. Residents gather to watch the moment their frozen top of the world highway. With them is Tony Beats. <laughs> well, that is great. Finally, that ice is breaking up. The wait for Boat ready. I got Seamus to take dress number two apart. That is the starting point of my season. Last obstacle. Now he can get his power barge Jasmine B a hundred miles up the Yukon River and start moving. So we got the Oshkosh running here. Jasmine B sitting on the trailer. It's too far over to the left here. As well, let's just get another 10 feet over. Yeah, I'll pull myself away from the bank. See what you got. Okay, try it, Mike. You get in there, we'll take the blocks out. Pull the barge up the steep bank into a better position. Rock that, Mike. The best vehicle to handle Tony's 60 ton. Keep it off. <laughs> Mike's eight wheel drive, 18 ton military grade Oshkosh. family creek one valley over from thistle creek every spring they hold equipment fuel and even their cabin a hundred months using a dozer to carve out a road well, sake. tony's 60 ton power barge of its trailer without it He'll never bring his million-dollar dredge back from Thistle Creek. We really need to get this in the water. We it's a three-day round trip, and every day we lose, we can't make up with the fall. 
So what are we gonna do? Well, we got a wind flying in there, pull it back up. Tony's plan? Have Mike push in one loader with forks up front, second loader from the other side. Now all we gotta do is pull it back on the trailer. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Okay, Mike, push, Monica, pull. takes another shot at getting river. Let's put it in the water, guys. Okay, Mike, back the thing up. of preparation, Tone Lyle journey upriver to his dredge at Thistle Creek. As far as I'm concerned, he's in the water. We're ready to go. I'm in California, up in the Yukon. Parker has flown 2,000 miles south to Palm Springs, California, in search of future. They just can't keep mining under Tony. I've got to keep looking for ground because the royalty rates are so outrageous. Take a big gamble on anything that doesn't have these same terms. Parker's landlord, Tony Beast, takes up to 30%. Right now, we give him a huge amount of royalty payments, and I can't imagine that he's going to be too happy to give that up. Hey, Parker, how are you? Good to see you. Come on in. Thanks for coming. 78-year-old Ken Tatlow and his wife, Joan, together with local miner, Stuart Schmidt. So, Parker, what can we do for you? Well, I just wanted to find out a little more about that ground you've got and are you interested in doing with it. We've discussed it between ourselves, and we'd probably be interested in leasing it. Do you want to look at something? Yeah, do you have a map? Okay. So here's uh, Eureka Creek. The ground that we're talking about is 35 claims. Wow. And then just going downstream, there's something like that. There's time to mine in here. Uh, there uh -huh. is, there is. Well, this is Tony's ground, right? That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. so Tony's dredge is set up just right in here somewhere. This is literally right next to Tony's dredge. Like 500 feet away. He could put a cannon on his boat and be shooting at us. Yeah. <laughs> but like, right. But that's that's my problem, yeah. guys. Is. Yeah. I'm thrilled that yeah. you guys have this, and yeah. um, I've been looking for something like this for several years. Right, I guess you guys, we were thinking of the standard 10%. Yeah. Wow. So if you take out 6,000 ounces, we get 600. Is that standard? 1,000 ounces, I would pay double that. Because it's 30% royalty. Over, no. It, wow. Over 5,000 is 30%. Wow. You're wow. kidding. It's impossible, really, to pay that kind of royalty. You're dealing with different people. We shouldn't talk about it too much. I don't want you guys to change your mind. <laughs> Wow, I really... Well, then we should just move forward, okay? So... You too? Yes, I'm all forward. Okay, got a deal. Turn your life away. Let's do it. Ten, only two pages? Where's the other 15 pages? Pretty basic. Let's maybe pick in a big old battle with Tony Beats. Yeah, should probably keep it. This is very interesting. <laughs> It'll be fun. Well, be good. <laughs> <It'll> be... <laughs> we can't stop you. <laughs> <laughs> Drive safely. Thanks, Ken. Play from Tony Beats <laughs> has bought him a future on low royalty virgin ground <sighs> that's a result taking ground doesn't get better than that i mean tony's not gonna like it you know how he acts when it comes to not being able to keep. so we'll see in the Klondike with a new land deal under his belt. But he can't abandon Scribner Creek at his current landlord. I like mining, I like being up here, and the more places we have to go and mine, the better chance we'll have of being able to make a sick of time being. Tony Beats is gonna be our home beast because I've got a big investment in the ground. Gold mining is at Scribner Creek. Parker's already spent a million dollars in manpower and fuel to rip through permafrost. 
and open cuts to get to gold-rich pay dirt. Until he gets the gold out of the ground, Tony. And right now, Parker's current lease for Scribner is up for renewal. I can't hang in with Kenneth Stewart and go crazy and try to kick us off the ground. So I've got to get that lease signed with Tony right now. My main concern is he may already know that it could just be a big grenade, right? You know where Tony's at? Uh, he just... All right, thanks. How are you doing? Okay, what's happening? Can we all get the sign? All right. Okay, let's do it. All right. I have no I didn't write the damn thing. So how much are you going for this year, Parker? You got any goals? Let's hold bet with Todd. A little bit, yeah. So he's saying 5,000 ounces, so I guess we'll have to do something like that. Playing 500 royalties, so that adds up to, huh? No kidding. So are you happy to sign this? Yeah, I'll sign this. If people are going to piss them off some other day, how is that, Parker? We'll piss each other off, I'm sure. The year is not over yet. <laughs> Have a good one. We'll have to have coffee. Yeah. Again, we'll do sometime it. soon. All right. Have a good season. You too. Go get me some. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Parker's contract safeguards his investment in the gold at Scribner Creek. Got her done. Now, at the same time as starting work on his new low royalty land. As far as I'm concerned now, I'm legal with Tony. We've got a lease sign and start stripping this new ground that we got from Kenneth Stewart. He definitely may not like it, but... He can't stop me. I like Barco. I like the ambition he's got. I, I recognize that right off the bat. That's why we're doing about 5,000 ounces. Good for him, good for us. But it's not a party, it's a business. Like and somebody in business do completely different things. That contract bull is over with. I really have better to do. Tony's home turf. 
on a mission to prospect his new low royalty land. It's dirt is right through his camps. I don't want to pick a fight, but you know, I do. So hopefully he's not around. Hoffman's has paid off. Oh, 
How's that, Rick? To be on track for their 5,000 ounce, six million dollar gold. Parker needs 40, 70, 90. There's three digits. 20, 130, 150, 170, 180. Here we go. 200. Come on, come on. 196. 196. Oh, 200. <laughs> About 201.9. 202. Good job. Good job, man. Dude, that's awesome. Seriously, that boy is. That's what we're shooting for, right? That should put us ahead of old Todd Hoffman, I would think. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Keep her up. Two ounces is worth two hundred and forty thousand dollars not two hundred two ounces that's a hell of a result that up the season will be a breeze out of Parker's hands. That's going to feel good. Real good. Hey, Parker, this is Todd. How's it going? <laughs> Not too bad. How are you doing? So what did you get? It was 202 ounces. 202? Yeah. Normally, that would have kicked our ass, but I'll tell you what. It's the best time we've ever had. I can't wait to take your 100 ounces, kid. Hang up on me. Obviously here, they don't think they've ever had 200 ounces or 210 or whatever they've got, but. Todd's here. On the all new season of Gold Rush. Todd's beat us here and that's just not acceptable. This might be our best season ever. Between Lucifer and Big Red, we've got two very hungry mouths to feed. Parker Schnabel fights fire with fire. Hoffman's. The guy can make that red. We've got to evacuate. Tony Beach doubles down with two. So long. The thing is going to go. Do we have to make a spaceship out of this thing? Where's gold from the dredge? No, what the Get your hand off that lever. Todd Hoffman's crew comes out all guns blazing. I can't work with my dad. Parker might have worked. Somebody just shot at us out on the road. Everybody off the mine. And that we've ever had, ever, on this gold rush. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dude, somebody to go. Everybody off the mine. He draws up, he pulls down on us, and starts shooting. <laughs> about to start right now. Looking pretty desolate in here. What the f You think this is funny? We need every little flake we can get now. We want to get anything f else we'd rather get. There's the other no excuses. So we're trying to avoid like that. The thing is going to go. It looks like we're making some progress.
and we're not about to start right now, especially not with money on the line. Parker has set a mass million dollar season goal, and he's relying on foreman Rick Ness to deliver half of it. Here's a comment. We've done it before. We've gotten 2,500 ounces on a big red, but that's the most we've ever gotten. But you know how gold mining is. Never a sure thing. The wash plant, big red, chews through 130 yards of pay dirt an hour. And he's tasked operator Brennan Ruoting pay from last year's cut. Well, I'm just on the last stretch of pay. I can't get any more. I'm trying to scrape up what I can bed right now. Looking pretty desolate in here. Yeah, no kidding. There ain't much left, is there? Wow. Not much left in here, huh? No. <laughs> Hard to keep four trucks busy. No kidding. Total left. Two, three days tops. Can't believe it went this fast. And just wait, it's done. The whole cut. Well, we got to speed this up. We got to get this new cut down to pay dirt a lot quicker than we thought. We should probably go put a dozer and rip that overburn gravel and get us down to pay. You want to go hop in a dozer? If you need me to, I'll get it done. All right, let's do it. All right, get to it. Go. Thanks, guys. Let's keep that plant sluicing. Pay dirt in the old cut is shrinking out in 48 hours. Two weeks ago, Parker and Rick started opening up a new cut. They've removed the first six feet of overburden, but they're now in a race to get down to gold or they'll have to shut down Big Red. Big Red's run slick, but the price of that is that you've got to get a lot of pay up. In the new cut, Parker's crew is trucking worthless, bringing in the dozers, is their only hope of getting down to pay dirt in time. This broken half. Damn it. We're trying to get down to the pay. You nuts. Lovely. Parker brings in a spare shank. Just get out of the way! If they can't keep their dozers running, they have no chance of getting down to Peter in the new cut. If Downtime is the gold miner's worst enemy. Doesn't change the fact that we gotta fix it and put it back to work. That's all there is to it. Our big red running. We need to keep it fed. That should do it.
insane. Where does this come from? Right out of nowhere. Well, last night we were in t-shirts. It was sunny, and then we wake up to a foot and a half. I don't know if we in this. I really, dude, I don't know. I mean, we got to give it a shot. I mean, we need every single. I don't want to slide a rock truck down the hill and somebody get hurt. That's a foot deep there. Most red is just buried. Good. Where is everybody? Are we the only one? Hey, I don't think we're mining today, Todd. I tried firing up the wash plant, the water. I can't get any water through the spray bars. To get ready? I don't think we can run, dude. I know we want to get gold. Well, I don't know. We're going to lose a whole day. I say we plow the road and try it. Peter, it's under a foot of snow. I mean, it's a mess. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Slow down. What is he doing? Dude, somebody just shot at us out on the road. Somebody pulled out a gun and just started shooting at us. Where? Really? He shooting at us. He just, we, we stopped, we thought he needed help. He came over, started chewing our asses, pulls out a gun and started shooting. We need to know what's going on. I think we better get to town. Sheriff's Let's tomorrow. get to the sheriff, guys. Everybody out, you guys, everybody go. Sheriff's station, you guys need to go. Everybody off the mine. Somebody, everybody out, you guys, everybody go. You guys need to go. Everybody off the mine. Got his Subaru stuck. So a bunch of us went up there to kind of go pull him out and help. As we were driving back, we went past, uh, out into the road behind us and was waving down and I noticed him in the mirror so Logan backs up to see what's going on. We roll down the window and just second to the door and just starts yelling at Logan, telling him how we're not welcome and that if we keep on coming up this road, we're going to get shot, that we're going to get killed. And it, turned, it turned really ugly really fast. One, in so many words, told the gentleman to get away from the truck. And as, as I put it in drive, we're creeping forward. Homeboy puts his hand on a gun and the second I saw him getting the gun out, I hammered it. And we got out of there, down on us, and started shooting. And never in a million years would I imagine that that would happen. Just talk. Go up there and, and try to grab the guy. Hopefully they find him. Who is the guy? It was the same guy that came and confronted Fred. Okay. Well, that. You can see the look in the guy's eyes when he confronted me that day on the road. A lot, a lot of anger and a lot of craziness there. Trying to argue you with car. You don't have You don't have a fence around the destiny pit you're supposed to have. You're in the wrong He's going to shoot you. He said he could get shot. I thought he was just coming up being friendly. Come walking and you as loud as he could right into my face. He said it's people like you that are going to get shot here. The scary part for all the rest of us Colorado, we have all our families with us. It's not just us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see a cop. You gotta stay here, I'll go talk to him. We'll come by and let you know we did end up finding the guy. You um, did? He is in custody now. No kidding. Oh, yes, sir. Awesome, that's good so, news. All righty. Hey, thank you very much. Okay, I'll call down there. All right, thank you, sir. Thanks. Good news. They got him. At least for now. Good. Let's take the rest of the day off, and then we'll hit it again in the morning. We're all wound up. Yeah, smart yeah. idea. Thankfully, nobody got shot. We're not going to let this stop us. We got to. I want to get these bodies in the water, but I really got to get going on that one because it's about time we get. This season, Tony Beats is on a mission to move his $1 million second dredge from Thistle Creek and his power barge, the Jasmine B, to transport the 70-year-old dredge 100 miles down the Yukon River. Hey! What the f*** was that? Power engine's overheating! Last week, the engines on the 60-ton barge got so f***ed, bringing Tony's entire operation 
to a grinding halt. Time is at the essence. It's down to foreman and mechanic Seamus Christie to find a fix. Or Tony risks another fail. Quitting isn't an option. Seamus needs to inspect the heat exchanger. There's a bunch of little tubes through there, so I'm going to take my bar scope and see uh, what I might see, see if the tubes are actually plugged. This is just a little camera with a screen. All the coolant flows through these. All these little tubes are just totally plugged. It's getting a little frustrating. The biggest problem I'm and here I am fixing a boat. Do you find out why it's overheating that, Seamus? on all this crap in the... Yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but it's not, whatever it is, it's not supposed to be in there. We need somebody with some marine know-how. Somebody that knows it and can give us answers right now. Well, but I really, really gotta go to Thistle Creek because if we're gonna get anything done, we better get out there. Let's do it. Am I impressed? Definitely not. But we gotta do about it. The thing is gonna go. Unable to barge on the Yorkshire, but to fly the 70 miles to Thistle Creek limiting him to a small crew and a 30-year-old crane. What do you think, Jameis? Yeah, I'm looking forward to get started on this. Tony's second dredge was built in 1946 and after switched off its engines and has sat dormant in Thistle Creek ever since. Definitely like to have a plan. Like to take it apart systematically. I was one day, I'm going to kick the out of it. I mean, just get the thing done. Yeah, don't kick the tin out of the wheelhouse so we can leave it all together. Okay, I'll we'll kick it up. Bring me some hammers, bring some Let's get the started. Let's go! It's awesome to get started. I mean, you gotta wait and wait. All last year, there's always some There's the out of that, and then I feel good. We got all the crashing and banging over with. Tony should be Let's get the crane. Everything is hold on by a bunch of bolts. 
You know, I, I don't know how many... What do I have to do? He says he's been doing them. I, I, but he's not. Brennan and his dozer are back in action. Of his grip in the ground, they're telling me to rip. In the old cut, Rick loads the last. Gonna come down to the wire. We're burning through it pretty quick. All these two, three hour setbacks are killing us, right? Brennan has just hit gold rich Pater. One step closer to Pater, you betcha. <laughs> that back of idler. This is Brennan's third breakdown. Deal, dude. I don't know, man. I'm trying my hardest to keep an eye on this stuff. You. You think this is funny? <laughs> really? No. You're gonna sit here and laugh about a bunch of breakdowns that are your fault? No grin on your face. Well, it's just frustrating every these things are breaking down and I gotta come and tell you and then I get this response. I don't know if it's just you or it's yours, but dude, you're done on the dozers. You're gonna go run a hoe, all right? All right. Like, I'm just over this. Well, so am I. It's There's rough. one guy can have. Just hop in a hoe and start loading trucks. All right. I'll take when I deserve it, but that really is just house luck. Can't stand kids. I'm a man, not a boy. Parker's chances of getting his new cut dens out are getting slimmer and slimmer. We're pretty right now, actually. We need everything to work just about perfectly to try to get 25 feet. We got a rod and we got to get gold. So let's see if we can get this sucker going. In Colorado, the man who shot at Lee and Todd's crew can get back to mining. Come on, come on, start. There we go. It's going to take a while for it to warm up. I thought it was supposed to get warm today. Todd's lost for no snow. He needs his wash plants producing gold or he'll fall behind. Now it's all closed and got everything opened up so not the mat, let everything thaw out. Looks like we've got full water down our sluice box. That's a good thing. Because we can't run unless this is thawed out. This Come your way. 
you don't step out in the cut. It's a pretty rough week, man. Don't even remind me. <laughs> you know, we're experiencing a first here. And I really don't want to see us finish that way. To hit his 5,000-ounce season goal, Parker needs 100 ounces of gold. Some nice nuggety stuff, Richard. It's a lot of gold. Yeah, it is. There's no kidding. There's 20, 40, 60, 90, 125. Go on, shake it all out. 145.5. There we go. 145.5 ounces of gold, worth $174,000. A little flake we can get now. I would imagine that we're falling a little bit further behind old Todd there. Last week we were 10 behind and we're a little low going too. We need to get Sluice for going and keep our boot and our numbers up here. We basically have to get 400 ounces a week. So, Duma, where's that? 347. So far this season, Parker has produced $416,000 worth of, of his $6 million season gold. Good job this week. Brennan, you're forgiven. Thank you. <laughs> that was kind of a week from hell. After a crazy week of short... Todd and his crew will struggle to stay on track. We've still got some run time, man. Hopefully we get some gold to, to come. I'm going to lose 100 ounces to Parker, and I don't want that. Hey, guys, there's Jack. It's our gold, Jack. That's it. To see what it looks like. Look at that, guys. Wow. wow. Big chunks in there. Yeah, there is. How much total? 183.1. Yeah, $220,000 worth of gold. <laughs> Double Trouble didn't win any prizes. They got 83. 100.1. Nice. Right. Good. Stay on to that thing, Fred. I got it. Honor, you beat us. It's heavy. Good job. So, what's the season? It's 395. <laughs> 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 Three Huffmans have mined an impressive $475,000 worth of gold, beating Parker Schnabel. I want to mention one thing, and I won't mention it again. I have worked a lot of years with Dave Turn. He's not here. I want him, and I hope whatever he does in the future that he's successful, and he gets to spend a lot more time with his grandkids. This plan. But um, even though Dave isn't here, I did learn a lot from him last year. But... Um, I don't think I should get all the credit for it as a team. You guys are the best team in the business. That's a lot of gold for what the hell happened to us. Let's hit it again in the morning and... <laughs> Hunter, Hunter, Hunter! Are you dead? Oh, Not my fault. I might have promoted Hunter a little too early. I'm a little pissed the Do you have to make your spaceship out of this? Todd couldn't find oh, Look out! I think that'll put us ahead of the Hoffmans. To gold yet. On this gold rush. I hope you're not gonna wait for that ice to melt. Needless to say, a little hiss to the Don't count this all, Prince. Todd beat us in the last two clean and the guy couldn't find gold at a jewelry store. We gotta be careful here. Make sure nobody gets hurt. Whoa! Don't put us ahead of the Hoffmans. I might have promoted Hunter a little too early. I can't work with my dad. I can't have him here micromanaging everything I do. You can't just walk off. Parker at Indian River. Foreman Rick 
has already produced 347 ounces towards their 5,000 season goal. Rick's here, Rick's Lucen, and if things are going good, they've got a lot of open ground, so it's time for the mud to move up there, so we're taking two running cats up there, get them going, and uh, keep them going 24-7 here for a while. Parker has bet rival Todd Hoffman he'll beat him this season. The only way he can do that is to her in the creek cut. So today's a big day. We're shifting our focus from Big Red to Slucifer, um, and that's just not acceptable. And the guy couldn't find gold in a jewelry store. Now it's a matter of getting these things up to Slucifer. Because once we start slucing with old Slucifer there, we don't stop. You know, it goes 24-7, and if it's down, what time or a weekend? While the dozers begin expanding the creek cut, wash plant. You guys have been busy. This looks good. Yeah, it turned out nice. It looks really good. Have you pulled a conveyor over and get that lined up? Wow. Last season, Parker spent $300,000 here to move pay dirt directly from the cut to the plant. They've put a lot of money into this conveyor cost a lot of money. But the nice thing about it is now it runs pretty flawlessly with a very limited amount of resources. The conveyor sits on an excavator and at 150 feet from it to maneuver. How am I looking? Yeah, I might have to slide it for a foot or so. You know, when we're putting the conveyor in place, we have to be really careful that we don't get But the conveyor has all the drive motors, the hydraulic lines, the rollers, everything right out there on the end, and it's, uh, you know, real fragile stuff. chasing a bull. He's running double trouble, and at the start of the season, promoted his son Hunter and gave him control of Monster Red. We've had a great three weeks so far. We've managed to stay ahead of Parker. He's going to pick up the pace. We have to follow suit. we got to pick up our pace, too. Rather than increase the yardage on double trouble, Todd wants Hunter, Monster Red. We gotta pump the yardage through here and we'll see what happens, you know? We gotta hit that four. I can crank it up, but I don't know if it's gonna handle it. I don't know either, just do it. Crank it up. Parts, but I'm more worried about if the if the feeder can handle it, so we'll see. Now this feeder is turned all the way up. We're running a ton of dirt right now. Um 
which is good. Gotta be kidding. This Maximus has emergency shutoff switches on it. Uh, we actually have those and they're setting those off and it's shutting off the feeder. Running water without pay dirt through the sluices can... Up front in the plant, what happened? Did he shut the water off? Yeah, because you weren't running pay. And then you start running. Meal, I got it back oh. going and I put more dirt in it. Why don't you have the whole radio? He died, I don't know why. why? I did all you the myself charging? and I got it going again. Did you charge Not it? No. Well, Hunter's radio died, so he doesn't, he's not communicating, so, you know, he's, he's not running. I, I don't know if he's ready for this kind of responsibility, if you want to know the truth. Hunter Hoffman is under pressure from his dad to push Monster Red to the max. Why? You can't run, no way. No way, is that how it's been? You can't run a belt that full. That's what I've been telling you. More dirt, but the increased load has pushed the feeder belt out of alignment, risking a costly tear. All right now, it's a lot of weight, so I have to turn it down. All right, well, we'll turn it down. Then we'll go from there, okay? Get fire. Sometimes my dad gets a little bit over ambitious and uh, wants to kind of push things to the limit a little bit. And uh, we just couldn't run this plant as fast. Yeah, we've slowed the feeder down a lot and uh, everything seems to be running smoothly now. I'm gonna run it my way. Usually what they do is they start sluicing in April and then I'll have money coming in and pay a roll and the bills show up. Three weeks into the silly started tearing apart his second dredge at Thistle Creek. With $2 million committed to the project, he's hemorrhaged dredge number one, catching gold at Eureka. I mean, they're going to get $3,000 of the gold out of the ground to show that I'll be... Son Kevin is in charge of dredge number one. Tony wants me to fire up the dredge ASAP. I mean, last year we were floating the dredge. Kevin checks the pontoons that form the dredge's hull. Alright. Well. What kind of problem you got? Oh, have a look for yourself, you tell me. How the f do you got that much ice in there? You guys never tighten it up, never fix it up? So you pump water all summer? Yeah, exactly as you told us to do. Mm hmm. It's Kevin, get it fixed up, okay? Yeah. Pontoons full of ice. Oh, no floating. Oh, sinky. Two of the dredge's pontoons are filled with 1,400 cubic feet of ice, enough to fill 16 SUVs. Look, Kevin brings in specialist contractor Richard Buffard. Okay, so you have nothing, like no wires and nothing in there? No. There's no airlines down this one either. Richard will use a high-pressure steam jet to cut the ice into out of the pontoons. After five hours, Richards cut the ice into blocks small enough for Kevin to remove. Excuse me. Hey. Can I have a chat? 
Richard. But, but, okay, Richard, all right, Richard. When you work for me, make sure you get both hands free and not a coffee cup in one, would you? So get rid of the coffee cup, okay? Okay, because, hey, you can load up a off too. Shockingly, people drink coffee. I'm finish your job before Tony pissed them off. Tony's just everything up. He does not know how to step back and let people do their You can't trust employees. They only beat school of management. Needless to say, I'm a little Look at our turnover rate and take out family. When we go through almost 50 employees, the sign, it's not the people you're hiring at that point. for gold. situation over there I had control of it and he has to come in like I don't know what I'm doing and I can't work with him I cannot work with him anymore anybody in this world knows your dad and I know exactly what you're going through but you can't just walk off then run off but we don't quit understand right i think one will get in here for a second sure clean that up a little bit finish out the last bit of the day how to run this operation and i don't need my dad here trying to tell me how to run my crew Like people, we've tried feeding it slower. It's just 
I mean, we can turn the RPM up some more and just get it right the limit. If the upper fast, the dry dirt will block the pre-wash. Mitch's solution to increase melt faster, which will distribute the paint further into the jets of the pre-wash. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna try and get some more flow through it. That'll put more oil in the lines and uh, pick up our bell speed. So, you know, adjustment here, but you can really tear things up and break if you're not careful. So we've been running at 1500 and 1600 flat out for this thing, so. Just try it down, huh? seems like a small thing, but if I can fill up a pontoon, sink the dredge. At Eureka Creek, Kevin Mike can fix the hole in the pontoon that sunk the dredge last year. Uh, I'm falling on the way in. Get a lake. Oh, yeah. dark in it. Hopefully all the holes are fixed. We should be ready to float. So, how come you're not running yet, Kevin? Oh, you mean? A grand final log pole? The generator is 40 years old. And that... That ain't gonna happen. No, I think you might truck with a can either. Let's give that one try, do they? Okay, fire the thing up, Kevin. Fire in the hole. Anyway, you got a generator going. Power for the dredge's seven winches. Driven by compressed air, they maneuver the barge and control the bucket line. Gang pl So you figured everything's gonna run or what? <laughs> no. Gonna show Tony how our winches are. You see anything happen down there? Okay, so how come the thing isn't moving, Kevin? It's because our airlines are all full of and if I tighten that clutch anymore, it's gonna wear right the through. So, what is it gonna take to fix all this? So, is get new winches, just new, off the shelf, then we know they work. And they're not this old, they should be hydraulically driven. Air, just a switch. I know you went to school and all this already, but I mean, do you have to make it? Spaceship out of this one, you can fix this old and do yeah. it again next year, uh huh. Or we could just spend a bit of money. How much is a bit of money? That's ballpark 600. Really? I get what you're saying because you know we can't be down all the time. And... No, yeah. So, did you enlighten your mother with this? So, point taken, get in line, and then let's just go ahead and do it. Radio. The dredge can months worth of gold a week. So Kevin could make back the $600,000 investment in less than three weeks of dredge two to fund. Money is tight. Not too happy about this, really, but hard point to argue with him. You know, we have to, we have to keep running. Hunter Hoffman is running Monster Red, and his dad, Todd, is having trouble letting go. For me to learn and for me to, you know... For a minute, I just wanted to watch this loose box run. Yeah, this looses are backing up. Try to figure out what the hell's going on. Your screens are too big and this screen's why it's plugging up. Really? Yeah, you got roughly half inch holes in here right now. Somebody get on the bypass, we gotta shut down. Monster Red separates gold from rocks in its large vibrator. Two screens prevent the larger rocks from dropping through into the sluice runs, where only the gold and fine material should settle are too big and small rocks are falling into the sluice along with the gold clogging the riffles 
and causing golds. There's the main reason the sluice box is backing up. Half inch streams. They're making a little bitty. This is bad. That's the bottom deck. Is this big? Bottom deck. Yeah, but you need to make this decision. Look at that big. We're not getting too many that big. That's my thoughts. The, I stole it from Star Trek. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. I mean, we don't have a choice. We have to change them. We have to change all the screens. There's 36 of these in there. Let me see how many of these we got. Many. I hope so. Oh, yeah. I think so. Nine, 18. There's 36 of them. Hey, um, Freddie just told me that our bottom deck on our wash plane is half inch. So we're, I'm going to change it to 7 mil. So, you know, we're going to lose some runtime. We're going to be down. But um, once we get that fixed, hopefully the sluice box is running a lot better. Oh, you're eating fish and chips with Juan? Good. With his dad off the mine site, Hunter is free to... You know, it's my plant, so me and Dave are in here changing these, even though it sucks. Uh, we got to do it, and... Four hours later, the job is complete. But now that we got them changed, hopefully, um, hopefully the sluice boxes are running better. And so, uh, you know, in turn, we're going to catch more gold. Fired! better to me yeah i mean it feels way better it's not packing up but we won't know for sure until we shut down but i think it was a good move can't get my fat butt in there so that's not easy let's go kick some ass and get some gold he's giving me a call says she needs to talk to me Kevin may have convinced Tony to invest $600,000 in improvements to Dredge 1. Hey, Mom. million dollars for your modifications that you're doing? But it's Mom Minnie who has the final say on the Beats family finances. It's going to take. It's looking to be a couple of weeks, but we were down for two and a half months last year. With having two dredges to pay for, uh, it's making me happy right now because I'm not quite sure how to pull this one off. I remember last year when we did the cleanup, we didn't clean up everything frozen runs. So we can clean that up. It's not going to cover everything, but at least it's something coming in. I can go make that happen. Well, you bet. Check this season. So where the f is Kevin? Well, then it's two hours later. Oh, <laughs> oh there's Kevin. The f took you so long. You want it done right or half-assed? So that's what you left behind? Go away. Let's see what you got. See what we got. Ten. Twenty. Forty-two point eight five. Worth over fifty thousand dollars. I hope this is the last. We had a piggy bank from last year. Very good. Say, get the <laughs> back over there. Put that <laughs> together. There's bills to be paid, right? Yep. Let's go. Pay for a little bit other modifications. Got to start somewhere. Coming up. Hey, uh, meet me over my truck. This is the problem. Your son. Your grandson. In 2008, feed and $50,000 worth of gold from Yukon miner Mike Mickey. He had left the gold in his wash plant overnight, frozen in his sluice box. In the Yukon, for the first time this year, the gold room should be working at full tilt. I got a sciatic, I'm pretty sure it's a sciatic thing. But Chris Dumit is struggling. 
Harker may have the answer to his prayers. So you Excuse me. Have you been missing a little Australian? Oh my God. I know. Oh, oh. <laughs> so good to see you. Well, welcome back. Get in. <laughs> the 18. Somebody back fun again. to talk to. And... <laughs> no, it's really nice to have Ashley back. Yeah, because I think he really likes her and she helps him clean gold. So it's a double whammy there. Would you? Yep, coming over. In Colorado, Todd and Hunter have each shut a cleanup. All right. Well, not really all right. That's it, huh? This isn't very good. 87.25 between the two of you. Worth just $104,000. Yep, between the two of you. Ugh. That's it. We're not accomplishing what we came here to do. Okay. Well, we were last clean. Yeah, at least. To hit his 5,000 ounce goal, Todd needs to average 200 ounce they've just mined. What is the problem? Your son. <laughs> Your grand? Listen, you guys, if you can't work it out... We don't have any time to argue. Okay, we just, I have to run my plant, you have to run your plant. We just have to run yards through this. I need to back out, back away from it. And if I slowed you down by stuff I did, I'll run it. So I'll focus on double trouble. You focus here and hopefully we can get a hell of a lot more gold. Yeah, work. I got to stop arguing with Hunter. I got to let him run that plant the way he wants to run it. I got to run double trouble and hopefully, you know, our fourth ain't going to cut it. Looking pretty good, bud. Looking pretty good. Check it out. Oh, yeah. It would not be ready right now if it wouldn't be. <laughs> she did all the heavy work for me. Thank you so much for coming back. You're a lifesaver. Let's see what we got, Dumit. Okay, Rick. So far, Parker has mined 347 ounces to get on track for his season goal of 5,000. Parker from each wash plant. 60, 70, 100, 110, 115, and the total is 119.3. Not bad, man. Yeah, let's see what old Lucifer did. That'll put us ahead of the Hoffmans. Well, I think that was updated here. The, Todd sent me a text today. 87.25. Well, at least we got him by 100 and, what, 160 ounces this week. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sure Todd will have some long list of excuses for it. Now we got to keep these two things going. Yeah. No doubt. It's one thing to have a couple hundred ounces here, but we've got a couple thousand to do. 400. We'll deal with this. All right. I'll leave you guys to it. Thanks, guys. Later. Bye. Mike, pull it up that crush. Put the thing over the fence, get rid of it. Good, pull the other thing. There's a giant shit down. This whole area is frozen. And I just see Rick not really getting the job done. I thought we'd be way farther ahead than this. Not the venture, not the game. Xin chào mọi người, chào mừng mọi người đã đến với kênh Nấu Sách Nói Chuyện cùng mình nha Hôm nay chúng ta sẽ cùng nhau tập một mẫu báo có tên là Blackpink bị đả kích lo chuyện yêu đương hơn sự nghiệp Lisa nhảy thác đi khiến danh tiếng nhóm đi xuống Ồ, oh, đây là một tiêu đề mang nặng tính thôi Cô ký Chưa tìm ra cái sức lĩnh thế nào Ok Đầu tiên, khuya mùa 11, mùa 1, mùa 1 tháng 11 theo giờ Việt Nam thì báo cáo nội bộ dài 2000 trang của 2 bị tung tràn lan trên các nền tảng. Trước đó, văn bản này đã bị quốc hội Hàn Quốc công bố, nhiều nội dung đã bị truyền thông tiết lộ đề cập đến việc thu thập thông tin. Phân tích tiêu cực các nhóm nhạc K-pop, 2 trở thành kẻ thù. 
hai đã trở thành kẻ thù số một của nhân lục fan đừng vì văn hóa nói xấu này tất cả các nhóm nhạc đối thủ như Blackpink, Aspa, Ive, Enmix cho đến cả nhà BTS, Seventeen, New Jeans, TXT đều bị hai điểm mặt đặt tên và đưa ra nhiều đánh giá chủ quan khiến danh tiếng nghệ sĩ bị ảnh hưởng Đứng trước cuộc hoàn truyền thông chưa từng có thì CEO của hai đã từng phải lên tiếng nhận lỗi và xin công chúng tha thứ vào ngày 29 tháng 10, song sóng gió vẫn chưa dừng lại. Phẫn nộ nhất lúc này là đoạn nội dung tiêu cực về Blackpink. Nội dung mới nhất trong văn bản nói xấu của K-pop của hai phân tích Blackpink, danh tiếng giảm sút vì scandal nhảy thoát y của Lisa, các thành viên tập trung và yêu thương nhiều hơn bất kỳ nhóm nhạc nào. Đây là hình ảnh mạng Blackpink. Từ khi ra xuất hiện ở đêm diễn Crazy House tại Paris đã tạo ra nhiều tranh cãi, dù mục tiêu có thể là khẳng định sự tự chủ và quyền lực của bản thân, nhưng phong cách biểu diễn tại đây với những màn trình diễn mang màu sắc blue uh, burlesque, burlesque đã gây trái chiếu trái chiều trong một bộ phận người hâm mộ. Họ cho rằng hình ảnh này quá tháo bạo và phù hợp với hình ảnh ban đầu của Lisa và Blackpink. Ngoài ra, hình ảnh của nhóm cũng bị tổn hại đáng kể do các thành viên đã đến cổ vũ Lisa. Tuy nhiên, ngay vì ngay từ đầu nhóm này chưa bao giờ lấy vấn đề nữ quyền hay giới tính làm chủ đề, nên tôi nghĩ Lisa đến mức này cũng không sao. Đây là nhóm tập trung nhiều vào các mối quan hệ yêu đương hơn bất kỳ nhóm nào khác. Lược dịch văn bản nội bộ của hai. Đây hình ảnh của Lisa diễn ở đêm diễn ở Crazy House này. Bên cạnh đó, hai còn tiến hành thu thập thông tin tình hình fandom của Blackpink. Những thương vụ đại sứ nhãn hiệu thời trang cao cấp kiếm fandom Blackpink chia sẻ nặng nề. Đây cũng là nhóm nhạc kiếm hoi, có fan cá nhân của các thành viên có khi còn lớn mạnh hơn fan nhóm. Hai nhận định, scandal dùng chất cấm của Rose từng rầm rộ trên mặt báo là vì bị fan Ubi của Jisoo bày ký hãm hại. Chưa dừng lại, một vấn đề nội cộ chính của cả nhà hát nhép cũng bị hai tung hê. Trong báo cáo nội bộ, tập đoàn này thừa nhận lỗ học kỹ năng của Liz Severin và cho biết đã lấp liếm điều đó bằng cách để nhóm hát nhép trong một số sân khấu. Năm qua, Liz Severin là nhóm nữ bị cách thức K-pop vì màn thể hiện ở thảm họa Coachella 2024. Sự việc này, trách nhiệm của công ty quản lý là không thể chối cãi. Hai không chuyên nên kỹ thần thượng về Liz Severin đại diện cho cả K-pop trên chiến lễ hội âm nhạc lớn nhất, thành tích uh, lớn nhất hành tinh bằng sân khấu không thể tệ hơn và bị chỉ trích là nỗi ô nhục quốc gia. Và đây chính là hình ảnh Les Perrin đã biểu diễn ở Coachella nhé. Trước đó, hai vị fan đừng BTS và Seventeen kêu gọi tẩy chay về những sách lược vô nhân đạo, vui giật hai nhóm nhạc nam đẻ trứng vàng. Qua 2.000 trong báo cáo nội bộ, xấu xí đen tối của tập đoàn giải trí sông Hàn Quốc bị phơi bày trước công chúng. Bang si người đứng đầu tập đoàn bị gọi là kẻ thụ đồ phá hủy giá trị tốt đẹp K-pop. Đây là hình ảnh Bang si người đứng đầu tập đoàn bị gọi là kẻ thụ đồ phá hủy giá trị tốt đẹp K-pop. Tập đoàn này từ nghĩ là cái tập đoàn này từ lúc bắt đầu kiểu nổi tiếng là scandal nó rầm rộ xấu này ngày nào cũng không có được scandal cho đâu quá là mềm mỏi luôn sẽ để chúng tôi xin hỏi nhiều tình này có scandal không có tính vậy câu chuyện dài ha Tôi mới có 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 tôi mới Ok, vậy là mình đã hoàn thành xong video này của nhau mọi người. Cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi video này của mình. Bây giờ xin chào và hẹn gặp lại. Bye bye.